All right, everybody, as we get settled, make sure you have your 3D up, glasses. Uh, and if you have any small children, can you please move them to the center of the tram? How are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thought we'd be going by now, but it's all right. I'm not going to move on. And we're starting a little later than anticipated. <laughs> As we're starting a little bit later than anticipated. All right, folks, we are about to get started and head out onto the lot. For those of you who just boarded, uh, welcome to our 60th anniversary studio tour. Our driver today is John, and my name is Vanessa. I will be your guide today as we head out onto the lot. For the next hour or so, we will be going behind the scenes of one of the world's biggest and busiest production studios where we film things such as Hacks, Loot, American Ninja Warrior, and America's Got Talent. Our studio tours started in 1964, right here on the lot, and we're going to be seeing a lot of our uh, a lot of our areas with a lot of history today. So hold on tight as we get going. I am going to give you some of our safety rules. That's right, folks. We have safety rules we need to abide by. First of all, if you need any guest assistance or have a medical emergency or if you drop something of value off the side of the tram or have any sound or video issues, reach up and grab the red e-cord that runs along the center of the ceiling of the tram and I'll be back to assist you as soon as it's safe to do so. Otherwise, during the entire tour, please stay seated and keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Remember to use the red cord above your head if you need any assistance. The studio is private property, and if at any time during your tour you drop your phone or just can't wait to use the restroom, pull the cord and remain seated. Please no smoking of any kind on the tour. Anytime. Be prepared. Our tour today features loud noises, sudden tram movements, fire effects, and many water effects. You'll want to have your cameras out for great photo opportunities, but keep an eye on them so they don't get wet. Finally, for your safety and those around you, please do not use selfie sticks while you are on board. <laughs> All right, everyone, we will be using the cameras. You can see me for about, for part of the tour, but if it gets really dark while we're going, we are gonna have to turn it off because the light is super bright. I will look like a ghost to you and our driver will not be able to see. So, uh, we, so you get to see me for right now. Actually, I'm gonna play a clip for you. Let's get our, uh, our anniversary off on the right foot. On March 15, 1915, our founder Carl Lemley invited the public into the studio to watch silent movies being made. Guests could walk from set to set and marvel at the new technology involved in filmmaking. But with the invention of sound and the need for quiet on the set, the original walking tour ended. In the 1960s, under the leadership of company chairman Lou Wasserman and executives Al Dorskind and Jay Stein, the idea of reviving a tour of the studio returned when the Grey Line bus tours originating in Hollywood made a stop at our gates. On July 15, 1964, the first of our red and white candy striped glamour trams took 67 passengers on a two-hour driving tour of the Universal lot, and the world-famous studio tour was born. We started with two drivers, two guides, and one ticket seller working out of a trailer on Lancashire Boulevard. From there, the studio tour expanded with fantastic one-of-a-kind Hollywood elements like the rock slide and the burning house, which were on this part of our tour back in the 70s and 80s. In 1980. As we make our way down this timeline and you see these posters on the side of the tram, those are just a few of the representatives film catalog we have, we have created since we were founded, uh, since we opened in 1915. Actually, we were founded a few years before that, and our very first 
film was Demon and Pythias, and it was made in 1914. March 15, 1915, our founder, Carl Lemley, invited the public into the studio to watch silent movies being made. Guests could walk from set to set and marvel at the new technology involved in filmmaking. Now we are on our front lot, everyone. And you're, walking, you're driving through some sound stages right now. We're going to tell you a little bit about them. For the past 60 years, studio tour visitors have driven right by these buildings, and inside these walls, the sets from your favorite TV shows and movies have transported audiences anywhere the imagination can take you, even to a palatial mansion in Bel Air. When we film Bel Air, we love coming out of the sound stages and seeing the trams fill with excited guests as they drive by. So, uh, keep an eye out. You'll never know who or what you'll see on the studio tour. That's right, folks. In the 1960s and 70s, the guests on this tour could visit the costume room of comedy legend Lucille Ball. They could step into the office of the Oscar-winning costume designer Edith Head or drive through the prop warehouse on the tram. By the 1980s, this was home to the Preview Center, a popular stop on the tour that included the special effects stage, an interactive show that featured Robert Wagner and its video as its video co-host. And speaking of our television, we are now heading through a section with many of our sound stages where our TV history uh, really expanded. Now it began, our first TV history began uh, in, with the first airing of the 1939 New York World's Fair. That was our first transmission and since then we have expanded quite a bit. Or not the uh, the king card. Night Rider. I think, I thought it was more Everything you see on your screen has been found somewhere in these sound stages here. Uh, over to your right hand side, those sound stages have historically been home to things like the Jefferson. One day at a time, Martin and Coach. And more recently, they have been home to Based on a True Story, starring Kaylee Coco. If you have a look over to your left-hand side, these are our bungalows. That very first. Uh, yes, Hydra Jimmy Fallon did appear. He appeared in a. He appeared in a suit, uh, like a like an Oscar-looking suit. But I think she. They're still on soft opening, so she accidentally played the clip. But he does appear. He appears at the beginning. So historically, some of these bungalows have also been used, not just for the wardrobe department, but also for hair and makeup. And they were temporary residences for a lot of our actors that we had on contract here at the lot. And now they are mostly home to our production studios and administrative offices. And if you look on the left side of the tram, we are passing by a familiar silhouette to many people that belonged to Alfred Hitchcock. So we will continue hearing from him now. Oh, now Stop. Entering our back lot. This is known as Colonial Street. You do meet the strangest people on the tour. This on the left hand side, this sound stage, these are two actually in one. So this is one of our this is our most versatile sound stage. 25 and 26. So we can have a central divider removed and they can become one large area as uh, we made use of with 2016's hairspray. 
Uh, and now they are currently home to Lopez versus Lopez, starring George Lopez and his real-life daughter, Mayan Lopez. All right, folks, we are now heading into our back lot. Our back lot is comprised of uh, most of our large exterior sets. So what you're about to see, starting here on your right-hand side, is a lot of our large exterior sets. This is four acres of what can be dressed as banks, firehouses, theaters, anything that you would have in a large metropolis, we can make it look like that here. And for a smaller area in a large metropolis, this is our court, this is our brownstone street. You can see the brownstones off to your right hand side. You might have also seen them in a little movie with Jim Carrey. Place the dog! I'm in the shower! <laughs> Have a look, there they are. He ran right down this way. Oh, you're done now. Great. B E A U. Right now, we are entering Hill Valley from Back to the Future film starring Michael J. Fox, Christopher Lord, and Leah Thompson. This oh, it's Cordial Doc Square. Brown. Hey. And there's Doc Brown. Hi, Doc. That clock. That clock tower is where Doc harnessed that bolt of lightning. That clock tower over to your left is where Doc harnessed that bolt of lightning that sent Marty McFly back into the future. What's up, Doc? Hello, Doc. <laughs> well, we, sh we shouldn't disturb the space-time continuum for too long, so let's say goodbye to Doc for now. Bye, Doc. Bye, Doc. Thank you. Our courthouse square still has many facades that were built in the 1940s. The rest of this set is our metro sets, and they are considerably newer, redesigned, and rebuilt in 2008. Before that, this area was home to a studio tour classic, and here's one of the stars of Universal's 2005 version of King Kong, Jack Black, to tell you about it. I love Jack. And self-action. Did you know the metro sets were once the home to Hollywood's biggest star? Right here is where the original studio tour King Kong attraction resided from 1986 until 2008. He stood 30 feet tall and weighed in at 13,000 pounds. Over the years, millions of guests got to meet King Kong face to face as he shook the tram. So close you could feel his hot banana breath. <laughs> Jack. I can't believe that's my last line and then tram moves on to the next thing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, we do. And a quick look to your left and right, you will see that we have some paintings on the, on the sides of the walls. Those are decals and they can be torn off those windows and changed so we can change that up. And now we are leaving the concrete jungle and heading up to our actual right. jungle. That's right, See, folks. This runaway We're going back to Skull Island. It's the original King Kong that, that made me want to direct movies. I Ready, saw brother. that movie on TV when I was about age when I was old. I wanted to become a filmmaker. I like films that just take you away from your real life and sweep you up in the future. You're on board the ship, you're sailing to a lost island, you're encountering monsters. Train, I didn't do anything. You know, prehistoric Not times. yet, maybe not today. No train today. So I was Probably on Thursday. Thursday. Me back to Skull Island. And it's great to have you along yep. for the ride. Now we Probably folks watching that will be making some noise at the official so start of the anniversary. Ready. Don't put them on yet. Just not Just today. Have them in your hand because we're about to return to Skull Island. And King Cup. All right, everybody, just a quick reminder to hold on to all of your personal belongings and your water bottles and your children and get your 3D glasses out. 
Uh, no collapsing bridge, but I don't think that was... In the press release, they said uh, the, uh, the train was making some noise. Probably on Thursday, I'll be back for a past member preview all. Check on that. That raptor panic's all about. everybody. Oh, that feature was brought to you by the people at Weta FX. On a screen that's 40 feet tall and 180 Good feet God. long, they have won seven play Academy play Awards play for play. their protections play. such play. as King Kong, Avatar The Way of Water, play. and The Lord of the Rings. Uh, with Project Man Studio Tour, the audience is in the middle of the environment. They're looking in all directions, there's creatures coming at them, they're seeing Kong from this side and T-Rexes from the other side. Working on a movie, we always know where the people are looking. They're looking straight ahead, they're looking at the shot that we're working on. Here you have to take into account that people are looking in all directions. Also, one of the things about this ride, unlike the movies that we're used to working on, there's no cuts because it's one giant shot and this tram is driving along from Skull Island is where the camera's from. This ring represents the where the screen is 10 meters away. Everybody have a look out the right side of the tram. You will see our collapsing bridge and runaway train. Oh, there the runaway train. The collapsing bridge was a mechanical effect that the trams used to cross. The hydraulic support beams would split and the bridge would seem to collapse. Oh, I didn't hear any noises, the but train was I don't know if that was it or not. Sets, and it used to hurdle I guess they did the do the runaway train. come to a screeching halt. Both are retired effects made for the studio tour 50 years ago. Well, during a part of our time in Kong, our tram became a picture car the minute it was yanked off of our track and into what looked like the movie, so uh, that became a picture car. Picture cars are any mode of transportation that is used on set in a film for the purposes of being filmed, not the little golf carts that we use to get around everywhere. And we have some picture cars here on our left-hand side and a few guests to tell you about it.
The studio tour has changed over the years. Each generation Ooh, has George Lopez. Lopez. Memories, whether it's the rock slide or the ice tunnel. Dad, really? Who didn't love the ice tunnel? Well, one thing that hasn't changed has been family sharing this one of a kind behind the scenes adventure together. How about picture card? Oh, that would be great. There you go. That's right, everybody. These are some of our picture cars. We got Gyrosphere from Jurassic World. Uh, it looks like, you know, you can see it doesn't have any glass right now, but it did have glass in the film. And the reason we don't have it when we are filming something is because we would see the reflection of everyone making the film. And so we film it just like that without anything on it. And then we add it in post-production. We add the appearance of the glass and then we add the reflections that we want. There it is. Dino Paddock. Sometimes picture cars can be used to transport us back to familiar times in the past and sometimes to places we have never been to. Welcome to Jurassic Park. So for many years, sounds this here. part of the studio tour was the greens department, where we keep real plants and trees that can be used as set dressings for TV shows and movies. Nowadays, it's where you can see many of the set pieces used in the Jurassic films, including some plants and trees, except these aren't real. Just like the dinosaurs around here. At least, I don't think the dinosaurs are real. Actually, there might be a few real ones around here, so just be on the lookout. Blue. We only have room in the paddock for every our ever expanding collection. We are now heading into a classic attraction here on the back lot, and here to tell you about it is today show co-host and weather anchor Al Roker. Time for my favorite part of the tour. Let's go again. Well, so we when it comes to film and TV, it is truly a special effect. In fact, to demonstrate how weather effects are created, we debuted our first major attraction here on the studio tour way back in 1968. with a 100% chance of rain. Woo. The flash flood. Ooh, that was a bright light. Now our rain is created by a sprinkler. The water is pushed up from underground tanks and flows back down at the top of them flowing naturally back down to earth. Our strobe lights That's create our lightning. Light. And we have sound designed especially for the speakers. And here's our flash flood, everybody. That was 10,000 gallons of water coming right at you folks. And thanks to some absolutely spectacular scenic design, <laughs> not a drop got on you. All that water flows downhill, back underground into our underground tanks, where it waits for its next production, next train to flow by. All right, everybody, now we are heading into Six Points. This is our Old West. Now, we call it Six Points because it has six points individual streets and the reason we have that is we built it like that was because during the old west during the beginning of our times creating uh, our western films we could there was no sound involved in movie making so we could do everything all at once so it, we could film six westerns back here and no matter what kind of noise we needed to make it was totally fine because there was no sound that was being recorded so you had directors out here with megaphones Probably just absolute chaos it would seem to us right now since we have so much quiet on the set necessity. 
as we're paused here, have a look to your left and right, and you might notice the size difference in some of the doors. Uh, the reason they were built like that is that in the Old West, if you needed one of the characters to look taller, maybe than the actor is in real life, uh, then they would stand in front of a small door, making them look much larger. And if someone was a little bit too tall and they wanted them to look shorter, they'd stand in front of a large door. And because of the magic of what happens with a camera, what a camera can do, we had something called forced perspective, and that means that, every, that it looked like they were all standing in front of the very same door. So that's just a little in-camera trick that we can do. Now this body of water that we're passing right here is what we call the Hollywood Ocean. Here in 1974, we added the parting of the Red Sea to the studio tour. It was inspired by the classic film, The Ten Commandments, a Paramount picture. The star of the movie, Charlton Heston, made an appearance to part the waters for our guests. The glamour trams seem to drive right through the lake and give everyone on board a sea level view. There have also been exploding water mines, torpedoes, and prop submarines as part of the action in that lake. And one of my favorites, it was also used in the Creature of the Black Lagoon. I'll show you a clip of that right now. So it makes it, we can make it look a lot larger than it is. Again, the Hollywood Ocean. And now, folks, we are heading into what we call our old Europe. And speaking of monsters, this is where all of our monster movies got their head st their start. So from the 1920s to 1950s, we were known as the Monster Movie Studio. And we continue on making scary stuff as often as we can. In this very area, we're filmed some of our films like Frankenstein, The Bride of Frankenstein, starring Elsa Lanchester. And the mummy, which this actually was all decorated to look uh, like Egypt in the mummy. So we can transfer we can transfer this location to make it look just like in, in metro sets and all of our long our uh, long streets like New York Street. We can dress everything up to make it look like the area we want it to look, including we can make it look like the afterlife, which it was in the Good Place, starring Ted Danson and Kristen Bell. You, Eleanor Shellstrom, are dead. Cool. This location, the afterlife, come on. I have never, ever seen this. You're in the good place. I'm not supposed to be here. I can't risk going to the bad place. Okay, well, maybe it's not all that bad. Hi there. How can I help you? What is All right, the guys, it's time to take a, get a shake on. Well, it doesn't sound Please awesome. like the video. Thank you, Tyler. Awesome. Happy Monday. Never Press that thumbs up button. It's time to get a little shake on. Let's do it. So, uh, in front of us is a I'm very excited to get a shake on. And you may know that Let's last year do we it. The POV. That stood on this part of the lot for decades. Official we POV of the studio tour will be coming on Thursday on my Passover preview of my full camera. Hand, but yes, I'm giving you a little sneak peek here right of Earthquake. You can tell right now. by our wigwag lights. We always have a light on the outside. Here we go. Let's see what the new and improved earthquake looks like. So we have made an arrangement with production to travel Alrighty. through the elephant doors and see what happens inside of the yeah. stage. Uh, just to be on the safe side, everybody, go ahead and hold on to your belongings. Now this set has just been decorated for a highly anticipated production. It is Hollywood's only two-level sound stage. Check out the detail here. The first floor is decorated like a subway station. Now this is a hot set, meaning it is completely decorated, locked for picture, and ready for the, oh! Oh my goodness, everybody, hold on, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> much smoother. Much, much smoother.
hydrogen truck. Incredible. This is so smooth. Much improved. Let me tell you guys, that was much smoother than before. That was very nice. It was like, obviously still lots of shaking, but very like kind of a rolling shake. I, I like that a lot. You have just survived Earthquake, the big one. The attraction originally opened woo, woo, woo. Years ago in 1989. Yeah, buddy. For our 60th anniversary. And you can see that train just goes right back where it came from. And oh, the train. There's the like train, guys. Sorry. It gets reset and ready to go again for the next round. You know what that used to get stuck? That attraction oh, that was also com was completed with oh, a Hollywood makeover, updating all of the props and moving plus, the equipment, I like that. bringing the set into the 21st century. It, we've changed a lot of our technical stuff since 1989, I think. Well, folks, as we if we look over on your right hand side, you're going to be passing the back side of our six point set. So you can see what's on the other side, and you can also see a lot of props that we have sitting out there. We uh, don't move them. Yes, they're here for the sometimes rain we have in Los Angeles. All right, guys. Now we're leaving the Old West and heading up to Amity. Welcome to Amity, where every day is like the Fourth of July. Amity was a popular New England resort oh, yeah. town until the Alex, let me tell you, Alex. Shark, but not only does it look great, it's just, it feels amazing. Much better than before. For the summer season. He told me himself to remind you that Amity means friendship. In fact, oh dear, that doesn't sound like friendship. Jaws has been a fan favorite on the studio tour since 1976 when the shark made its backlot debut. There have been a few different versions of our mechanical shark, starting with one that we affectionately called Carrot Tooth because of its oversized teeth. Next year, the movie Jaws will be celebrating its 50th anniversary. That's right, filming took place 50 years ago on location at Martha's Vineyard. 
that's a much maligned shark. The shark was frustrating. It, it didn't really work all the time. It didn't work hardly at all. Wherever you if you're joining, make sure to press that like button. Press that like button. They were always saying, the shark is not working. Repeat. The shark. There you go. Press that like button. We just waited and waited and waited. The shark worked well enough for a while there and had the biggest hit of all time. So I really owe the shark a lot. That's right, but that shark being a pain uh, ended up forcing the movie to be released during the summer instead of its intended Christmas uh, holiday season release, which ended up making it uh, much scarier because people were also at beach going at the time it was released. And the reason the shark didn't work is because it was made to work in spring water, fresh water. That's how all... Yes, we'll be getting off the tram for photo ops at the Bates Motel pretty soon. Film. Spielberg wanted to film in the Atlantic Ocean, so the freshwater fish did not do well in the salt water. Over here to our right-hand side is our two-story ranch house. This is where Dolly Parton sang, I will always love you. It is a practical set, and that means that we can film on the outside and on the inside, making it very practical for all of our filming. We don't have to go from one location to another with those. <laughs> And now, folks, we are turning on to Colonial Street. It is named that because of its colonial architecture. And we have someone here to say hi to you who has recently filmed in this very location. Wow. Eddie Murphy. Ted. Let the festivities begin. How many we got? Well, let's see, we got 20 curtains. Fantastic. Do you think we're getting too old for this? Oh, come on, Johnny, we're doing a public service here. If a kid leaves the house in a less than stellar Halloween costume, he's got to get the bad news before he makes a fool of himself all over town. We're Samaritans. Thank you, Ted. So for our suburban neighborhoods, this is the area we use. We film music videos here as well as TV and movies. And as, you, uh, as we make our way around this cul-de-sac, if you look pretty much anywhere along the length of this street, you'll see that it turns a corner just when you think it would end. So it turns and it gives us the illusion that it goes on forever. But it really doesn't take oh, that long too. to drive up and down I it. So really pretty small, pretty small bit of real estate. And with that forced perspective stuff, we make it look a lot larger in real life. This was known as Wisteria Lane, also on Desperate Housewives. And coming up on your right-hand side, this yellow house was used for Davy's house in Never Have I Ever. And the house right after that, this lilac colored, yep, that was home to the Monsters TV show. Woo. All right, here we go, Bates Motel. Folks, this is just a reminder to hold on to all of your belongings. Please remain seated at all times on the tram and reach up and grab the red cord if you need my assistance. Now from Colonial Street to Lion Estates, you may remember that the Lion Estates was where Marty McFly lived in the Back to the Future trilogy. Have a look out the left side of your tram. That is a big question, I have no live idea. Live in the home of tomorrow today. These signs are replicas of the original props made for the 30th anniversary of the film. Did you know, in the movies, the exterior of Marty's house was a real home in a nearby neighborhood? But in the first film, when Marty travels to 1955, he finds the signs on the outskirts of town with no homes in sight. We thought we by now would have hover trams, but these are pretty cool too. You're on board our newest version of the tour vehicle, the electric tram, as we continue our commitment to creating zero emission studio tour fleet. Electric trams get their power from wireless inductive charging oh, no. pads, uh, just like the one okay, for your cell phone, only just kidding. much, much larger. Just kidding, and we're not gonna do it. Like an electric car, we oh, wait, have maybe we will. I don't know, but there's that a means every time we've gone downhill during this tour, we were building a charge. So I guess we we're no different way to get over when it comes to our tour vehicles. We started with Glamour Trams in 1964. In 1983, okay, we upgraded guys. to Super Trams, allowing us to carry more guests and experience more thrills. And in 2000, we added onboard video, turning the tram into a movie theater on wheels. Oh, there's a lot of people over there want to see. 
Oh, yeah, we are. We are. All right, folks. We welcome are. Here to we the go. Crash the world. Set War of the World. So this is a new route. Large scale sets like this have been on this part of the studio tour for several decades. Before production destroyed this suburban neighborhood for the film, it was site B for the Lost World Jurassic Park. Prior to that, it served as a whimsical Whoville for How the Grinch Stole Christmas. After every shoot, we make sure to make room for the tram so they could drive right up and get a close look at these iconic sets. The airplane crash site set is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around a vision that Stephen had. Newly rebuilt we'll facades right here. We're talking about the war of the world. I thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Because it's, it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. We should do a thing. Guys, I mean, listen, I'm not listening. I want you to close your eyes, okay? Okay, I'm closed. Robbie, get in. Get in. And that aircraft over to your right hand side is an actual 747. It was purchased from a an airplane graveyard in the Mojave Desert and transported here on four separate flatbed trucks. We had to cut it out just to get it here. Now for something spookier. Over to your right hand side also, we are approaching Mother's House. Halloween. The 1960 or film by Alfred Hitchcock, Psycho. Have a look. We hope she's Terror not still in that window. Good old Terror Tram. For the first few decades of the studio tour, one of our, hall our hallmarks was a visit to Prop Plaza where guests disembarked for a once in a lifetime photo and to interact with characters, vehicles, and props from their favorite productions. Well, guess what, guys? Just for our 60th anniversary, we have brought that opportunity back. Now, remember, folks, this is a limited stop. We are going to stop and let you off here. When you are ready to continue with your tour, simply follow the signs. You will be boarding a different tram with a brand new studio guide. So remember to gather all of your personal belongings and your 3D glasses before you disembark. You will need them when we resume the tour. As you disembark here, everybody, please walk to the front of the tram, towards the front of the tram, and have fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. Wait for my party. Yeah, we made it. We made it. Survived an earthquake, a shark attack. Yeah, we're invincible now. And now we can. We have to survive Norman Bates, though. All right, so we're off. So this is how it works. You get off. They make the trip in reverse. You get off at the base motel and you get back on over where the picture cars were, where those people are. And you can just follow like the pathway and spend as much time as you want over here. So that's how it works for the 60th anniversary. Here's a massive shopping cart. Look at that massive shopping cart. There's a glamour, a glamour champ. Close up at this thing real quick. Oh, don't want to lose my people's but also Let's get a little close up. Close up. There it is. Here it is. Got the original glamour train. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I didn't know that. That is an awesome fact, though, because guts are still in use. Okay, so now let's go take a look at this shopping cart. Now, is this a, from a movie? 
please let me know in the comments. Prom. I don't know where the line's wrapping around here. It should go through here. But yeah. There's Psycho House. Yeah. It's cool though, because they already got half of Terror Sham already set up. So when this is closed in August 12th, last day is August 11th, so August 12th, they can easily start building this because they already have half of the Terror Sham already done. You can like literally, I guess you can't step on it, but you can get close to it. Some more props, mailboxes, stage lights. <laughs> Got all these props and parking meters here. Old, uh, old, uh, Things. I really like the glamour channel, that's nice. It's super cool. And there's Norman again. Still, he's gonna come get. Ah. Oh. She's not feeling well. I guess we, we can't go see her today. She's not feeling too well. That's so fun. <laughs> Nice front shot of this thing. Look at that. There's the producer and director's chairs. Cool stuff. So waiting for the rest of my group. Got Dalen. Lovely team members here. Then thank you to Carlos for inviting me out today. Oh, I can't. So it's funny. I came here from a regular Fast and Furious update. And then all of a sudden, Carlos said he had an extra ticket here, and then invited me out. Cool. Here's the glamour tram up there. Right, guys, so right now we're actually walking on the back lot. Right now we're on Bates Motel set. Oh, they got a bunch of props around, a bunch of photo ops. It's pretty cool. And the cool thing about it is you can actually take your time. Exactly. You can just like yeah, chill out. Guys, they're not rushing us. Yeah, they're not like, rushing us. Like, like, keep it moving. Yeah. Keep it, I know. You can be here. I don't know if you can be here as long as you want, but it feels very relaxed right now. Yeah, you know. Like, you yeah, you like, yeah. yeah, you know. It's cool, cool. stuff. They're in line with you. Uh, spot a little photo op, photo op with <laughs> the. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. That's dope. Sorry, guys. There you go. So, yeah, nice little photo op with the. That's a nice shot, though, right there. Especially with the sun coming down like that. Wow. Punch it in. Trump pants. Yeah, but yeah, again. 
real cool shot with the golden hour sun sh uh, sunrise there. Super cool stuff. It'd be cool to come here at nighttime too. Then we can walk over there to board the trams back. Board back on the tram. Right over there. I think uh, Dalen wants a little wants a little photo. Wants a little photo walk right there. Look at look at Dalen over there. Go subscribe to Dalen LA. It's not a Six Flags concept, but also Universal Knots, Disney. Cool stuff. Dope car. Cool to actually be able to touch it. Oops. Oh, we're going. We're going this way. Um, not well. At least for right now, there's not. But I'm sure when there's like a lot of people, like a busy day, I'm sure they'll, they'll kind of push you along when other trams come. But like right now, there's no, just team member preview. But yeah, you know, during normal operations, there'll be lots of trams coming in. So. I'm sure they'll oh, kind of push you along. Yeah. Why hike five hours when you can just come back? Exactly. And this is this is real cool. Right? This is this is the we have thumbnail shot eventually. Hello, GL Power Coasters. <laughs> Hollywood sign. That's dope. That's real cool. I like that a lot. Shout out to Lindsay Land over there with their heart shaped glass. It's her and her mom. It'll be fun. What if, you know, like Dapper Day at Disney? Yeah. They should do something like that. Oh, yeah. They should. A glamour Day. Glamour Day. Yeah. Glamour Day. Shout out to Carlos for Glamour Day. There's the Glamour Cham right there, all wrapped up in plastic for some reason. <laughs> so. While we wait in line, guys, what did you think of Earthquake? Like, I thought Earthquake was fantastic. Yeah, I can't wait for you guys to feel it because, again, it's super smooth. I couldn't believe how smooth it was. Um, but that looked fantastic, too. Like, uh, the fire, everything's still there. Just updated from modern standards. You know, really cool stuff. And, hey, if you're watching, press that like button and, uh, you know, help, helps out the channel. Glamour Tram. I don't know why this one has plastic on their windows. It's very interesting. Pretty dope. More rocking. It was, it was pretty decent rocking, I must say. Put a fool. Again, put a full POV on the channel on Thursday when I'm back for the preview. Uh, Molly, you see me. What? Yeah, I'm here with you, man. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Boom. And there they go. You're in Hollywood, California. <laughs> Glamour Tram is now empty. Do a little photo op by the Glamour Tram. It's nice when like, the crowd's kind of die out. Yeah, I know. They can really just hang out. You gotta wait like the right time. With the producer and director's chairs. I wish director chairs were that comfortable. <laughs> yeah, the sun's hitting us. Let him go. Let him go. Nice. Yeah. They'll yeah, walk over there in a second for the Jaws photo ops. This is fun. This is fun. 
in your chat today. I don't get mail. Oh, yeah. I, I, oh, yeah, yeah. We got some mail. Josh the mailman. Oh, got some old water fountains. Oh, for the movies? Oh, this is from Street to Cross. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where's this guy? Tick tock on the clock. King Kong! King Kong. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Alrighty. Where's John Murray? I don't mind. There's Jaws! <laughs> Fast and Furious. Oh, that's massive. There's the Jaws. That was humongous. Let's take a look at this real quick. Yeah. The Fast and Furious stuff is over there. Yeah, look at it. Ah, that's huge! That's a massive photo op. That's actually... Taller than I thought, that's humongous. Oh my. Daisy. Mm. We have King Kong over here. But he is just a uh, picture, but you have his actual hand. Oh yeah. We have look at Jazzy. I guess we're taking line for a little photo off with Jazzy. And then of course the picture cards you see over there all the time. Sorry. Thing is, he, see how big that thing is? It's a big shark. It's a very big shark. I mean, look at that thing. Huge. I can only imagine like, what the crowds are going to be like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I enjoy the low crowd. <laughs> yeah. Especially open to it. Cool spot, I like the spot. Standing queues all the way down. Yeah, that's probably why we don't drive through here. Maybe this would be awesome. Uh, pickup could probably be moving a little forward. Yeah. There's Falls Lake over there. Here's the song that will demonetize this video. <laughs> cool spot. Operationally, the things should, this should work out well. But yeah, I'll be. But interesting to see it with a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Even just doing pass holder preview. But yeah, when it actually opens, like, I'm gonna be here on that Friday, maybe on Saturday too. Oh, well, definitely on Saturday, maybe Friday, 26th. See how it kind of all works out. For those of you just joining, we're on the walk. The walking portion or the pop-off portion of the 60th anniversary studio tour team room preview. About to take a picture with them. Massive Jaws structure. Very photo op here. And for how it works is you come through four worlds in reverse, get off a base motel, and then do the photo ops and then get on the tram right back over here.
And, but, I don't know, did the shark have a baby? Awesome. It's Jaws Jr. Yeah, see? It could be Jaws Jr. Because... Got Dalen with the shark. It's gonna shark. I know. I mean, like, seriously, how many people can you fit? That's like five people. <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, let's take a photo. Take a little video inside the shark himself. That's crazy. Ah. Ah. Oh no, I'll come back Thursday. Make some noise, make some growling noise too. See if we're doing any photo ops or we're heading back on the tram, not sure. I think the rest of the tram though is same, just an open, uh, fast and furious. Unfortunately. Yeah, it's like we're gonna take a picture of King Kong. King Kong's massive hand. I like the I like the new clips. Yeah, yeah the new clips are. It might have just been me, but it's tough to be hung. It's out a little louder. No, I'll maybe they clean up the audio. I don't know. I forget what's cool. Earthquake, yeah. Yeah. It was just nice being back in there. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Now the trap feels like an hour. It's awesome. I know. See if you can just like kick, kick back here all, all day. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I said, I think so. I'm thinking so too. It's like, I'm assuming maybe an hour wait for every photo on here. <laughs> Unless they limit the amount of trams. Yeah, I can see this game. Yeah, I got that popcorn bucket before I leave. One for me and one for Alex. Oh, that makes a Woody Woodpecker sound. Ah, that's Woody funny. Back. We didn't, yeah, we didn't know, you can just walk through the like board a, right here if you don't want to wait in the line for the pictures. I, don't know, I, I swear I saw something. They're like, we need to give a special hug. I hope he does. I know, that, I know they did that. What about the Hollywood sign? That's like, it's just like a Disney PD. It does look like a nice couch. Oh, 
Douglas popping back. Uh, I didn't think. Oh, no, not. Oh. I might be. I'll see if we're staying. Yeah, I saw uh, our earthquake. Yeah. Huh. I said on back. That's the original 1964 Glamour Tram powertrain vehicle. You can tell all the details of that come from the 1960s. I don't know when the next the one's coming. I don't know where they went. Metal there. Uh, interesting. There's like that backward row on there. I was like, that was interesting. Like a like one of those old uh, station wagon cars, you know. Rush, I can go ahead and aboard, get folks. one of these. All right, so once again, my name is Ryan. Just to, for those of you joining us, our driver is CJ. I'm going to be with you for the final act of our 60th anniversary tour. So just make sure you got your 3D glasses. All right, head back over, go ahead and get some dinner. Emergency safety cord if you drop something, you have a medical emergency, any auto issues, issues, or if you need any guest assistance. All right, let's continue with the tour. And we've got Academy Award winner, writer, director, Jordan Peele, to lead us on. I remember going to Universal Studios when I was 12 years old, feeling this feeling of wonder. You know, one of my first trips to Universal Studios, seeing the Jaws ride. Um, one of my favorite movies of all time. Just feeling like, that's him. That's the Jaws. But I, I don't even know if that's the Jaws. I hope it is. <laughs> Studio tour closes earlier usually, and so the start was at 5:30. The last show like at 5:15 for the guests. These are the sets of Jupiter's claim. Here to give us another introduction is Academy Award winner ride director Jordan Peele. Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take Ooh, it is cold now. and bring it to life. This is Jupiter's claim. Woo. Goodness, this might affect what I want to eat. Probably get some tacos, but still, it's open actually. So park closes at seven, then not the casino might not be open, but I might have to get some chicken. This might be the better bet anyway. Right. If you haven't make sure to join, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more theme park content and for a full POV uh, of this high quality date, Epic Universe update, and Disney stuff as well. Make sure to press the like button too. Yeah, I love to have it. I don't have one by my house though, so. Fast and furious. Now, climb to an imaginary elevation of 12,000 feet, and the only way 
Sawyer, with that to the bark, was through the ice tunnel, where the slightest sound would trigger an avalanche, and it always did, causing the walls to spin the guests to tilt along with the Hollywood special effect. And now we're going to bring you inside a garage. Oh, hold on a second. Yeah. This might be more serious than I thought. Uh, uh, is that, is that Saying that, that should be pretty healthy on Thursday. I'll tell
I got wet. Like, much wetter than the usual because I'm sitting on the side. Oh my god. Now I'm really cold because I got so wet. Alrighty. There's a nice little photo op at the end of the tour. I'll show you guys before you head on out. Oh my god, I'm so cold. Oh, there's Jimmy Fallon. Thank you, Jimmy, and thank you. Have a tramtastic day. But I'll look at some Horror Nights content, shall we? Let's see if we can see, uh, see some facade work. There's some cool uh, clips of photos, though. Right. Let's see what we got. Our 60th anniversary is special to us because the studio tour is where it all began. Right, Epic all Universe. Of the Bastards, all of our drivers, give it up for CJ. Yes. Woo! And all of our studio guys throughout our history who have helped make the studio tour world famous. From our first four guides and drivers to the hundreds of team members who support the tour today. Now, folks, during our preview tonight, the Hollywood and Dine, Mel's Diner, City Snacks, and the Plaza Court will be open and feature specialty 60th anniversary food items. Team members and their guests will receive 50% off on select food items at checkout with a valid NBCU US, USH ID. The In Park Universal Studios store will also be open and feature 60th anniversary merchandise for purchase. Team members and their guests will receive 35% off at select retail items at checkout with a valid ID. For any questions, folks, I'll be hanging out on the left hand side. Come by and see okay, so This is a really cool photo op. Yeah, and check this out. On behalf of our amazing driver, CJ, myself, Ryan, and everyone out. here at Universal Studios Hollywood, Hollywood, we hope you've enjoyed this exclusive behind-the-scenes experience that's been 60 years in the making. And as we Woo! say here in Hollywood, that's a wrap. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Good to see you out there. Bye, y'all. Amazing! Okay. So, lastly, we have this photo op to end this tour. 60 years. Oh, yo! Sorry, I didn't even recognize it was you, not in nice. clothing. How you doing? Oh, it's Alright, so. That's why I was that is the tour. Um, uh, not everything, of course. We still need to see what's going on on the Raptor paddock and the runaway train. I, they mentioned it, but I didn't hear any noises coming from it. So maybe that'll be a little bit later. Um, I'm back for the past member preview on Thursday at 5.30. Doing a full POV with the camera. I'm a little cold, though. I'm um, going to get myself some lock of semen, but I don't think that was one of the restaurants mentioned that was open. So if not, go to Chick Chick Chicken or somewhere in City Walk. Warm myself up. Thank you guys so much for watching this nice stream. A lot of viewers today. Thank you guys for pressing that like button and subscribe for more theme park updates and updates from Universal. Again, so hilarious. I decided to come and do a Fast and Furious update today, not knowing there's a team member preview. Then just was in the right place at the right time and got a nice, uh, uh, yeah, lovely, uh, nice TM uh, invited me along. So that's super cool. So hope you guys enjoyed the studio tour. Earthquake was probably one of my, definitely my favorite part, um, with the prop plaza being the second favorite part. That was super cool seeing the original Glamour Tram or one of them. And yeah, so I'm going to enjoy the rest of my night. Subscribe for more theme park updates and stay tuned for uh, some actual Universal World Fast and Furious updates later on this week's probably on Thursday. Have a fam or a tramtastic day everybody.